Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today we're working on the plant that is in the tutorial name. So it's either aloe vera, succulent, or snake plant. There are two different pot sizes that you can use and I'm gonna put both of those in today's tutorial so that you have both. Also we're gonna be running a separate tutorial just for these uh, soils on their own just in case somebody else would like to do something else with the soil down in the future. So today we're going to be working on the one that matches the name of the tutorial as I said and we're gonna be using our Lily Sugar and Cream and all the colors that you need are in the pattern as you can see right here. You're going to need a four millimeter size G6 is your crochet hook today and you're going to need some stuffing in order to stuff your soils in order to continue. So without further ado let's uh, do our soils first. Let's talk about a little bit about that and then we're gonna then work on the, the plant that's in the name. So we have to figure out the soil size. So what you want to do is that it's either going to be three and one eighths or it's three and seven eighths. So I would just do a three inch pot or a four inch pot and that's good enough to go. So this is a four inch one. So what we want to do is that we want to create the, the um, soils and the two different sizes depending on the size of the pot of course will just sit inside just like you see here. So it's gonna sit inside okay and there's a top to the soil so you're gonna stuff this. So what I'm gonna recommend that you do is that do not sew the topping, the top of the stuffing to the base after it's stuffed until you actually sew the plant on first and then sew it down on with the stuffing. Therefore you can reach underneath and just do all the whip stitching that you need to do in order to attach your plant. So there are two different sizes listed in the pattern for the soil. So I'm going to start with the smallest size first and then we're going to then cover the large size. So you can fast forward if you wish if you would like to work on the different sizes. So without further ado let's work on our soil. So let's begin. We're going to work on the bottom of the soil and the bottom of the soil looks like a bowl shape and then the top of the soil looks like a disc that will just be sewn on and it's slightly smaller. So once this is stuffed it will sit inside so it doesn't go all the way to the base of the of the pot. So it just stays on the top and then because it's gonna be wedged in it'll hold the plant upright. So our goal today is to be able to make the top and the, and the bottom. So this is the larger size. So the, uh, the smaller size will be slightly smaller but it's kind of the similar instruction and then we'll do the top disc. So let's grab our Lily Sugar and Cream Warm Brown is our color in a four millimeter size G6 crochet hook in order to play. So let's work on the smaller soil. So let's create a slip knot to begin and we're going to do a chain two. So once it's on the hook just chain two for me. So one and two and let's start round number one. So in the second chain from the hook the beginning chain you want to place in eight single crochets into that chain. So just going in pulling through and then pull through the two. So that's a single crochet. So do that eight times. So this is one, this is two it, and it's going into the same stitch by the way or same chain. This is gonna be three and I'm going right up over top of that straggler so it catches it underneath as well. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. And you may end up with a small hole at the top of your soil but you got plants sitting on top of this thing anyway so I won't worry about it. So you have to slip stitch to the first one of the eight. If you're not sure just count it back. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So just go into the eighth one and just go in, pull through and through and that'll close off your starting circle. So now that I've gone and I've buried this straggler as I went what I want to do is just trim that out of the way and move on to round number two. So let's do that next. Let's begin round number two. You're gonna chain up one and place in two single crochets into each one of the stitches going all the way around. So one and two and then move to the next one. One and two and next one, one and two. So you will have eight groups of two basically because you had eight stitches in the last round. So these are gonna go pretty quickly the soils in order to, to make these. So just two single crochets in each and then I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm coming into the last one and I can tell it's the last one but you're thinking to yourself well there's another stitch he's missing. I'm not missing that one. That one is part of the first one and if you're not sure just count back the groups of eight uh, to eight. So you got one group, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. This here is stretching into the first one therefore that's not a stitch. So that's where a lot of people go wrong when they start doing hats for the first time or round circles. So just slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet and you see it just pulled it nice and snug. So moving on to round number three. You're going to chain up one and put one single crochet in the first one 
and then the next one is gonna have two single crochets. So, so one and two and then the next one is one by itself and then the next one has two into the same one. So I want you to do that same pattern going all the way around. So it's either one in the first and then two in the next, one in the first, two in the next. Do that all the way around. So coming all the way around the last one should have two single crochets into it. I'm not doing anything special to make that happen. I'm just following it as in one in the first, two in the next and the last one should be two and then just uh, slip stitch it to the top of the first single crochet to finish that off. So moving on to round number four. Chain up one and the first two are gonna be by themselves. So just go in the first one single crochet, move to the second one. It's a single crochet by itself and then the next one after that has two single crochets into the same one. So one and two. So then that's the repeat pattern. So there's gonna be two by themselves. So one and two and then the next one has two into the same one. Please do that all the way around for this round. So I'm coming all the way back around the last one will have two single crochets in again and again that's not doing anything special it's just following the count and you're going to slip stitch it to the top. So in the pattern you're going to now fast forward and just go down the instructions and it says both sizes next round. That's where you wanna pick up. So what we want to do is that we wanna create the bend at the base of the soil so that it will fit into the pot nicely. So we're gonna chain up one and into the back loop only. So if you look at the stitches there's always two strands. The first strand is the front loop. The second one that's furthest from you is called the back loop. So what, now that I've chained one I wanna sneak in behind and I wanna get the back loop only and I wanna single crochet. So I'm gonna go one single crochet in the back loop into each of the stitches going all the way around. So do that back loop single crochet all the way around and I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm coming into my very last one still doing the back loop single crochet and I wanna join to the regular stitching of the first one. So the next two rounds are all we need to do now is just chain up one and going back into the regular stitch I want you to single crochet into each. So what I want you to do is this round and then just slip stitch to the top of the first beginning uh, single crochet, chain one and then do another round of single crochet around and then you're gonna fasten off and this is the base of your small soil. So please do this round and next and then fasten off and then I'll see you at the end of that and then we'll just quickly review and then what we'll do is that we'll then go to the top of the small soil to next so that you have a complete set. So I've done my two rounds of single crochet and that's it. So what I wanna do is leave an extra long tail on here so that I can use that to sew around the top if, when I put the stuffing in later but I'm not gonna, I don't have any top to put on right now. So what I have to do is that I have to go back in the pattern and create the top. So what we're going to do is create the top and then we're going to stop at a certain level. So we're gonna do almost exactly what you've just done now but except for you're not going to do anything beyond uh, making the turn in order to do the, the, the soil. So without further ado let's begin again and let's get your top done. So let's work on the smaller soil. So let's create a slip knot to begin and we're going to do a chain two. So once it's on the hook just chain two for me. So one and two and let's start round number one. So in the second chain from the hook, the beginning chain, you want to place in eight single crochets into that chain. So just going in, pulling through and then pull through the two. So that's a single crochet. So do that eight times. So this is one, this is two, it, and it's going into the same stitch by the way or same chain. This is gonna be three and I'm going right up over top of that straggler so it catches it underneath as well. Four, five, six, seven, and eight and you may end up with a small hole at the top of your soil but you got plants sitting on top of this thing anyway so I won't worry about it. So you have to slip stitch to the first one of the eight. If you're not sure just count it back. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. So just go into the eighth one and just go in, pull through and through and that'll close off your starting circle. So now that I've gone and I've buried this straggler as I went what I want to do is just trim that out of the way and move on to round number two. So let's do that next. Let's begin round number two. You're gonna chain up one and place in two single crochets into each one of the stitches going all the way around. So one and two and then move to the next one. One and two and next one. One and two. So you will have eight groups of two basically because you had eight stitches in the last round. So these are gonna go pretty quickly the soils 
in order to to make these. So just two single crochets in each and then I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm coming into the last one and I can tell it's the last one but you're thinking to yourself well there's another stitch he's missing. I'm not missing that one. That one is part of the first one and if you're not sure just count back the groups of eight uh, to eight. So you got one group, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. This here is stretching into the first one therefore that's not a stitch. So that's where a lot of people go wrong when they start doing hats for the first time or round circles. So just slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet and you see I just pulled it nice and snug. So moving on to round number three. You're going to chain up one and put one single crochet in the first one and then the next one is gonna have two single crochets. So, so one and two and then the next one is one by itself and then the next one has two into the same one. So I want you to do that same pattern going all the way around. So it's either one in the first and then two in the next, one in the first, two in the next. Do that all the way around. So coming all the way around the last one should have two single crochets into it. I'm not doing anything special to make that happen. I'm just following it as in one in the first, two in the next and the last one should be two and then just uh, slip stitch it to the top of the first single crochet to finish that off. So moving on to round number four chain up one and the first two are gonna be by themselves. So just go in the first one single crochet, move to the second one. It's a single crochet by itself and then the next one after that has two single crochets into the same one. So one and two. So then that's the repeat pattern. So there's gonna be two by themselves. So one and two and then the next one has two into the same one. Please do that all the way around for this round. So I'm coming around my last round here and we're just putting in two at the very end. No special tricks here. It's just following the pattern and you're going to slip stitch and just join to the top. So this is the top of the soil. Leave an extra long tail right at this point and you can use that for sewing. I left on long tails on both sides just in case one is more convenient than the other. Again it's only a few feet of yarn or a couple feet of yarn. It's no big deal. So what you can do is that now you can move on to your plant if you wish but now you have your bottom soil and now you have your top and then all you can just do is then stuff it and then it just sits together just like you see here. But I would sew on your plant first before doing the bottom section and then you're good to go. So you can move on in this tutorial. We're now going to move on to the large uh, soil and then let's uh, get that done just in case you would like to do that version instead. So let's move along and do the large soil. It starts off identical to the small soil. It just gets a little bit bigger that's all. So you're gonna start off with a slip knot and you're going to chain two again. So one and two and then just go into the first one of the two and then just uh, put in eight single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five. Go right up over top that straggler. Six, seven and eight. So now that you have your eight in there you can just join it to the first one. If you're not sure just count it back. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. As an experienced crocheter I can just tell which one is the first. However I do like to double check and count because it does matter in the future. So you know if you got the spare time obviously make those counts. So you're just gonna slip stitch to the top and what I would do if you went over top of the straggler like I did you can just safely get rid of that now and then you don't need to worry about it. So what I would do is move on to round number two. Round number two they are gonna chain up one and then we're gonna put eight or two single crochets inside each one of the eight. So there's gonna be doubling the size of the circle. So two singles in the first one, two, two singles in the second and I want you to do that all the way around for round number uh, two. I now have two into each one. If you're not sure see how it's leaning over. You think that's a stitch but it's not. It's part of the very first one. So what I want you to do is just ignore that. That's just part of one and just slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet that you started with and that will pull it nice and closed on you. So moving on we're gonna go for row round number three. Chain up one and do one single crochet into the first one right where it's doing the, done the join and then in the next one you're gonna put two single crochets in the next one. So the repeat pattern going all the way around is that there's one in the first and then there's two into the next one and two. Please do that all the way around for round number three. Finishing up round number three there's two into the last one and I'm just keeping my counts. It's nothing special and then just join it to the top of the first. So round number four chain up one and you're gonna do one single crochet in the first one and then you're going to do another single crochet in the next one 
and then the next one has got two into the same one. So one and two. So the repeat pattern then for round number uh, four is that you're going to put in two single crochets by themselves. So one and then two and then the next one has two into the same one. So please do that all the way around for round number four. Finishing up round number four, the last one has two into the same one. Again, just keeping the counts, no big deal and slip stitch to the top of the first one. So this was the size of the small one but we're gonna continue because we're working on the large pot size which is the base. So now we're gonna continue and we're going to um, put in chain one and the first three in a row will be one by itself. So one, two and three and then the next one has two into the same one. So the repeat pattern for this round is there's three in a row. So one, two, and three and then the next one has two into the same one. Please do that all the way around for round number five. So in coming up to the end of round number five, the last one is two singles into the same one. Just keeping in my counts and then just join to the top of the first single crochet. So one more round is to for the growth and then that will um, then we'll do something new. So we're going to chain up one and then you're just gonna do one single crochet in each of the next four. So one, two, three and four and then there's two into the same one. So the repeat pattern for this round is that there's one, two, three and four and then the next one is two. Please do that all the way around for round number six. So I'm coming up to the end of round number six and I'm just putting my two single crochets into the last one like I had been before. I, and we're just going to slip stitch and join. So we're gonna continue along with our soil. We're now going to create the bend that belongs in the bowl shape and in order to do that what we're going to do is that we're gonna chain up one and if you're new to crochet there's two strands. There's the front strand here. This is called the front loop and the back strand is the back loop. So I want you to do a back loop single crochet all the way around starting in the first one. Just go into the back loop only and this creates a bend in the material so that it will sit inside your pot. So just single crochet one single crochet in the back loop of each one of your stitches all the way around. So please do that and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I'm still working in the back loops only single crochet in this round and I'm coming all the way around and I'm gonna go on my last one and then just join with the slip stitch to the top of the beginning single crochet. The next two rounds are it for you and what we're going to do then is that we are going to then just create a, a one chain one and you're going to go one single crochet in each of the regular stitches all the way around. So go into making sure you get both strands and I want you to do this for two rounds. So just one single crochet in each then join it with the slip stitch to the beginning chain one and then one single crochet in each going around and then just join it again. So I'm going to meet you at the end of that. So just one single crochet in each for two rounds and I will see you there in just a moment and that will conclude your soils. Now that I've come all the way back around I'm just going to slip stitch and then just finish this off. So use an extra long yarn tail here and you can use that to sew that together with the top when you're ready to go. So let's, so let's move along and do the large soil. It starts off identical to the small soil. It just gets a little bit bigger that's all. So you're gonna start off with a slip knot and you're going to chain two again. So one and two and then just go into the first one of the two and then just uh, put in eight single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five. Go right up over top that straggler. Six, seven and eight. So now that you have your eight in there you can just join it to the first one. If you're not sure just count it back. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. As an experienced crocheter I can just tell which one is the first. However I do like to double check and count because it does matter in the future. So you know if you got spare time obviously make those counts. So you're just gonna slip stitch to the top and what I would do if you went over top of the straggler like I did you can just safely get rid of that now and then you don't need to worry about it. So what I would do is move on to round number two. Round number two they're gonna chain up one and then we're gonna put eight or two single crochets inside each one of the eight. So there's gonna be doubling the size of the circle. So two singles in the first one, two, two singles in the second and I want you to do that all the way around for round number uh, two. 
I now have two into each one. If you're not sure, see how it's leaning over. You think that's a stitch but it's not. It's part of the very first one. So what I want you to do, just ignore that. That's just part of one and just slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet that you started with and that'll pull it nice and closed on you. So moving on, we're gonna go for round, round number three. Chain up one and do one single crochet into the first one right where it's done, done the join and then in the next one you're gonna put two single crochets in the next one. So the repeat pattern going all the way around is that there's one in the first and then there's two into the next one and two. Please do that all the way around for round number three. Finishing up round number three, there's two into the last one and I'm just keeping my counts. It's nothing special and then just join it to the top of the first. So round number four, chain up one and you're gonna do one single crochet in the first one and then you're going to do another single crochet in the next one and then the next one has got two into the same one. So one and two. So the repeat pattern then for round number uh, four is that you're going to put in two single crochets by themselves. So one and then two and then the next one has two into the same one. So please do that all the way around for round number four. Finishing up round number four, the last one has two into the same one. Again, just keeping the counts, no big deal and slip stitch to the top of the first one. So this was the size of the small one but we're gonna continue because we're working on the large pot size which is the base. So now we're gonna continue and we're going to um, put in chain one and the first three in a row will be one by itself. So one, two and three and then the next one has two into the same one. So the repeat pattern for this round is there's three in a row. So one, two, and three and then the next one has two into the same one. Please do that all the way around for round number five. So I'm coming up to the end of round number five. The last one is two singles into the same one. Just keeping in my counts and then just join to the top of the first single crochet. So one more round is to for the growth and then that will um, then we'll do something new. So we're going to chain up one and then you're just gonna do one single crochet in each of the next four. So one, two, three and four and then there's two into the same one. So the repeat pattern for this round is that there's one, two, three and four and then the next one is two. Please do that all the way around for round number six. So coming up to the end of round number six, you're just going to put two into the same one and then just join it to the beginning. So let's move on. So to recap the soil, you have like a pot shape, like a, a bowl shape here. This is the bottom and then this flat disc is the top. So you just can grab your stuffing when you're ready and all you're just gonna do is just stuff inside this and you're going to place in the top. So the top is smaller. So what I would do is start with the top and start sewing it and as you get a smaller opening that you can reach into then just place your stuffing inside and then seal it. I'd recommend though you do your plant first and then you decide to do this afterward because it's easier to sew the plant to the one than it is to do the, everything here at the base. So that's just a recommendation and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to the plants next uh, if you would like to do that. So let's do that next. Whip stitch across. So you're going to just have to eye this up and make it sure it looks equal. So what I would do if you were me and I were you, so I'm just using that and I'm just whip stitching, is that I would go about halfway, so look across the road and then just use another strand that's a different color and this is about the halfway point over here and this will give you an indication of where you should be on the big and the little one when you mark it with a stitch marker. So you, uh, this will prevent you from just uh, favoring one side too much so that you don't end up with an unequal amount of yarn or sorry unequal amount of space. You can also do in the quarters if you want to as well. So what you wanna do is you want to at least halfway around maybe if not three quarters and you're just gonna whip stitch yourself just using the stitch work. Just use one strand on each side and just going across and then to advance, so you could advance to the next one at the bottom but just go into the same one at the top and that will allow you to advance on the bottom without having to circle around the top at the same time so that it, it allows you to be able to bunch your stitches pretty seamlessly. So I'm gonna go into the next one and then I'm gonna go into the next one at the bottom but then the same one I was just in. 
and you'll get the hang of that. So then you can see that you're attaching things together and the goal is, is then to seal this up and then I'll see you back here in just a moment when we're ready to start stuffing. So I'm back. I've gone a little bit more than halfway. I still have a pocket here. So what I wanna do is I wanna generously stuff the soil and you want it so that it's enough so that when it sits in the, the um, in the pot that it's got enough flexibility to it so it can take the shape but it's not um, too crazy and not stuffed enough so that it will fall over. So keep stuff in that till you think that's enough and then continue to sew it shut and then meet back here in just a moment. So let's begin working on the aloe vera. So the aloe vera is made up of what appears to be flags. They're all together as one and there's a crochet diagram which I'll review in just a moment. And what we're going to do is that we're gonna work our way down one side and then we're just gonna continue back and just go up and down until we get to this point and then redo it again. So there's two tall ones and three small ones. If you'd like to make a all of them the same size you can just follow one instruction just to make sure that you attach. When we get this done then what we're going to do is that we're gonna fold it so that this keeps it on the inside. So you'll see that there is an interior ridge and you're just gonna fold it and lightly stuff it and then this will be what appears to be as the aloe vera. So you wanna stuff it as you're, you're going. Once we get that done we're then going to sew it down to the soil. So let's go to the diagram next and let's uh, begin to do and show you how to do this. So here's the diagram for the aloe vera but let's just turn it this way because it's just easier for you to read it. So it's going, you're gonna do two of these first and then it's showing you to do this second. So you're gonna do two big ones and then three small ones. And so when you get back to this point and after you finish the first one you are just going to just go back to here and redo this again and then once you get it done the second time then you just kind of follow this along. So you can see that it's really quite interesting. So what I did is that if you turn it back I put the number of stitch counts that it was so there's a 11 trebles, 3 doubles, 3 halves, 3 singles. But you're going to notice that there's half moon shapes that when you go to look at this. And so we're gonna be playing here on the different kinds of um, the front loops or sorry I believe it's the back loops. Let me just verify that and I'll be right back. So I'm back and I just had to verify it is actually the back loops that we're going to work on this as we go across. So what's gonna happen is that we're going to get this done and by doing it in a certain format you create the, the look of these ridges which allows the project to bend when you're going to do this to give it the aloe vera look. So without further ado let's uh, start working on this together. We're gonna do the large one and then you can just do the second large one on your own but you wanna stay attached and then I'll show you to do the small one and then you'll do two more of the small ones and then we'll be back after that. So let's do the big one first. So I did verify. So on the one side we're gonna be working on the front loops and then on the other side we're gonna be working on the back loops. So when we go through this you'll just have to pay attention to which is which. Uh, because you have to turn the project back these look like when you're looking at it this perspective that's the same loop but because you have to turn the project over is that it will show you that you have to do front loops or back loops. But again we'll cover that and you see that there's three rows and then we then move on to the other side. So let's begin to do the first one. So let's start on the big one first and so we're just using a beautiful color here and we want to chain a total of 21. So let's do that. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, do all the way to 21. See me back here in just a moment. Now that I have my 21 on here we're gonna go through our first row. So both of the large ones are exactly the same. So you're going to then single crochet the next three. So second chain from the hook just go in the back loop only and just single crochet that one plus two more of its friends. So three in a row. Then we're gonna do the next three as half double crochets. So this in the next three let's make those half doubles. So one, two, and three. So we're getting a bit thicker as you can see. And now the next three are doubles. So they're double crochet. So one, two, and three. Now the remaining on chain they're all trebles. So there's a total of 11 of them. So to do a treble we wrap the hook first twice then going into the back loop of the next stitch and then just pull through two, two, and two and you're gonna do that all the way to the other side. So please uh, do trebles all the way to the end of the chain. So I'm coming up to the end of the chain I'm just doing trebles right to the very end. Just got my last one here and then we are going to turn and then do the next part of this which is row number two of the large. So let's turn our work 
and begin the next row. So let's begin row number two for the large one. So we're gonna chain four which counts as a treble. So one, two, three, and four. In the next one you want to go into the front loop only. So if you're new to crochet there's always two strands. Now if you go into the strand closest to you, so let me just point it out, this is the front loop and if you go into the other one that's furthest away from you it's the back loop. In this case we wanna play in the front loops. Wrap in the hook twice and we wanna do 11 in a row as far as these trebles. So what you can just do is if you look at it you can see where the trebles stop. So you can either count out your 11 or just and look for the cues if you're that familiar with it. If not just count, just remember that the first one we just did counts as one of them. So in the front loops only I want you to treble for 11 times. So this is now considered two and you're gonna do three and four and then five this is six this is seven this is eight we have nine 10 and 11. And I told you if you can really look at it you can see, see this is the last one here before it changes over. So you can just follow that along if you wish. The next three and still in the front loops, this whole row is in the front loops is gonna be double crochet. So one, two and three. So what is the next three after this? Yeah you're right it's a half double. So let's just do that. So one, two, three and that leaves you three stitches left and those are your single crochets still in the front loop. Just do the final three. So one, two and three and then turn your work. So turning your work you wanna do the last one. You can see that there's a line here. So if you see it you can really bend it. That's what's creating that bend. So next time round number, row number three which is the final is that you're gonna chain up one and in the back loop only. So this time instead of the front side you're going into the back loop only single crochet for the three in the row. So one, two and three. Then the next three are half doubles continuing in the back. So one, back loop. So two and three and then the next three are double crochets still in the back loop. It's all in the back loop this one and then the remaining on here all 11 of them will be treble. So wrapping twice and in the back loop just treble all the way to the base and meet me there in just a moment. So keep on traveling back all the way to the end. I'll see you at the end of this row. So I'm coming up all the way to the last one still doing the back loop only and then that's it. So there is one of your aloe vera and you can see that the bend is gonna happen because you were on the front loop the first time, back loop on the next and so you can just fold it and it's like a three part fold. So if you're continuing again and this is just your first one you're just gonna turn your work and you're going to chain a total of 21 and redo this all over again for the second time. So what you can do is reverse this video back and just follow this again and then meet me back here in just a moment and I'm gonna show you how to do the small one. But if we're moving on to the small right now what I'm gonna do show you the diagram because it's smaller so it'll go faster. So I'm back at the diagram so what we're gonna do is right at the end we're just gonna start chaining and doing the small version next. So the small version is really quite easy. It's chaining a 16 instead of 21. So let's turn it. So you're just gonna work your way back. So there's three singles, three half doubles, three doubles and only six trebles this time and you can see that's the same throughout. So it's gonna be three and you're gonna do three sets of these. So once you get to the end you'll just repeat again and then one more time. So let's begin to do the small aloe vera now. So let's do our small aloe vera. So you're just gonna stay right where you are and in this case if this is you moving on there should be two of these in a row and then it's this one like the, it looks like flags. So let's just chain 16. So one, two, three, four, five, four, five. So go all the way to 16 for me. See me back here in just a moment. 
So let's work our way back across the line and so we're gonna go second chain from the hook and you're gonna do three single crochets in a row. So you have one and two, three and then three half doubles in a row. So we have one, two and three. Then three doubles in a row three double crochets. So one, two and three and then the remaining will be trebles all the way to the end and there's a total of six of them. So wrapping twice into this uh, next chain and then pull through two and two and two and keep doing that all the way and I'll see you at the end of this row which is just a few moments away right here. So now coming to the end of the chain. So you're just gonna turn your work now and let's do row number two. So row number two is exactly what you did with the big one. It's just smaller and you're gonna chain four. So one, two, three and four. So working in the front loops only, okay, this time. So you're just gonna wrap the hook twice and go into the front loops and you wanna do six in a row. So the first chaining of four counted as one of them. So now you technically have two and then you go into the next one. This is three Four. This is five and six. Okay, so now the next three in a row are doubles. It's still continuing on the front loop. So one, two, and three. The next three in a row are half doubles. So one, two and three and then the final three are just singles. So one, two and three. So you're gonna turn your work and now do row, row number three. So turn it. So we're just gonna work on the back loops this time. So just chain up one and go in the back loops. The, th the three uh, first ones are gonna be single crochet each. And then the next three are half doubles. And then the next three are doubles. And then the remaining is just all trebles and there's six left. And I only know that because I've been doing the pattern for a while. <laughs> so you got one, two. So as I, I, I know I'm gonna end up with the right stitch so I can talk to you. So at the end if this is your first one of the small ones you just wanna restart again, chain 16 and then re just reverse this video back if you need to follow back through and then um, carry on and then do it a third time so that you end up with three of your, sorry you end up with three smalls. So all together you should have two large ones and three smalls all attached. And then once you're completely satisfied just fasten this off and then what we're going to do at the end of this is that we're going to fold everything together so that we can create all of the, 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 the plants so they stick straight up. So let's do that next. So now it's time to stuff your plant. So what you're going to do is that you're gonna see a line like this. This is the outside. So when you fold it, it just naturally wants to fold where if you fold it the other way it just wants to stay all curved. So it should actually be kind of uh, jetting out because of the way the folds are. So what you wanna do is you wanna grab a handful of stuffing and what we wanna do is whip stitch these together. So as we fold it around it's like a pea pod that we got a little bit of stuffing so that it stays. Don't overstuff so that you're gonna see it bleed stuffing as well. So let's show you how to do that and we are going to then um, just require the same color yarn and you don't need too much um, yarn uh, for your darning needle and then what we're gonna do is then whip stitch ourselves and stuff in place and I'll show you it to you once and then you can do it for all five. For whip stitching I like to whip stitch with my hand. This is my right hand. If this is a left handed tutorial you'll see it on the other side but I like to actually go forward in the forward motion as if I'm crocheting. So it's just the way that I like to whip stitch. You're gonna come in one side just of the one strand and one side of the other and I just want you to pull through and I want you to stop. So create a slip knot if I haven't already told you to do so. Create a slip knot on the other side and pull it through there 
and then it'll lock into position so you never have to worry about it. And then put the straggler on the inside so that it's inside the plant. So moving down you just go to the next stitch on the one side and the one side and just go straight across. And then once you go down far enough you can start stuffing but I, you can pretty much wait until you get to the boat down here somewhere before you apply your stuffing. And you're just going across the stitches. This is called the whip stitch. And you're just grabbing kind of like the same strands. And it says to lightly stuff because the, you use trebles. If you overstuff with, uh, especially with treb uh, trebles, you're gonna see the stuffing through. So the idea is just to give it enough stuffing so that it wants to um, just stay up on its own, but without bleeding any stuffing. Yeah, that sounds kind of crude, but it's kind of true. Now before you get too far along just take a little bit of stuffing and just stuff what's already kind of already done. Just use your fingers and just kind of push up into it. Just kind of using your fingers and just kind of you just your goal is not to um, do it so that you can really see it through. Okay so that's good. And you know what, you get used to in time also just knowing how much to stuff as well. So by the time you, you get to all five of them you'll be an expert of stuffing your aloe vera. <laughs> okay, so continuing along. And I'm gonna go right to the end and right at the very end before we actually put it to the plant we can also stuff a little bit more in the base. So leave the base open and you're gonna use the same yarn strand that you just started with and you'll use that to be able to sew it down to the soil when you're ready. So when you get to the very end just kinda like tie it off so it doesn't come out on you but just leave it there so that you can grab onto it later and use that strand then to go down to the soil. So what I want you to do just make sure that it looks all decent which it does and I want you to do these with all five of them so that you end up with that uh, so they'll be kind of a lot of fun. Actually this is kind of neat. So I'm gonna do all five now and just make sure you leave enough of a tail at the end and then we'll sew it down to our soil then later. So get all five stuff now. So now that all my aloe vera is stuffed I want to position this on the top soil. So you notice that I have not put the base of the soil on. So I just want to sew this so that it goes right through to this surface here and then I'm gonna sew it to the base then afterward. So it's done and they're all attached to each other which makes it kind of easy and you just want to just kind of pile it together and you just wanna sew one at a time. So if you just wanna just see where the first one is you can see that it's kind of coming around the circumference of this and then once you have everything sewn then you can just kind of uh, bend it and reshape it. Of course you can use crafting wire if you wanna insert in if you wanna kind of bend it in a different direction and so what we're going to do is just start on the first one. So let's just uh, grab one of the strands that I used and this is just gonna sew it down into position. So once you get this started it's really quite easy to do. So let's just get this started. So I'm just gonna go down and I'm gonna stay towards the outside here and I'm just gonna go down through the project and through the soil on the bottom side. And what I wanna do is that I wanna whip stitch that into position as I'm going around. So I'm gonna cut back up through the soil in a different position and then grab a piece of the aloe vera and then back down. And I wanna do that with all of the five pieces that I'm gonna do. So you'll end up with just doing a, a semi, or a circle right around the base of the soil. So what I want you to do is that I want you to sew all your aloe vera into position just going in and out and using this mat and then once it starts to fill up you'll see that it's working out really quite nicely. Uh, what I would do is just uh, before you sew the next one into position just kinda eye it out making sure that it's gonna sit right and just keep on going from that point. So I'll see you at the end of once you get everything sewn into position. 
So my aloe vera is now stuffed and it's now sewn down to this section. So if anybody ever pulls your plant out of there just to see how you did it because you've sewn to here if they pull it out of here they're never gonna see all of your stitch work. So it's kind of an awesome thing. So you're going to notice that this circle is bigger than this circle here and what we want, what we want to do is that we want to match. Now there's more stitches on here so you're just gonna have to somehow bunch it a little bit as well in order to bring it to, to conclusion so that you have a nice big fat base on this thing. So what I would do is do at least half of the stitches. So whatever strands you left on I'm gonna use the bottom strand here. Um, I just suggested to you to use long strands for both of them but uh, you know you can make that decision. So just whip stitch across. So you're going to just have to eye this up and make it sure it looks equal. So what I would do if you were me and I were you so I'm just using that and I'm just whip stitching is that I would go about halfway so look across the road and then just use another strand that's a different color and this is about the halfway point over here and this will give you indication of where you should be on the big and the little one when you mark it with a stitch marker. So you uh, this will prevent you from just uh, favoring one side too much so that you don't end up with an unequal amount of yarn or sorry unequal amount of space. You can also do in the quarters if you want to as well. So what you wanna do is that you want to do at least halfway around maybe if not three quarters and you're just gonna whip stitch yourself just using the stitch work. Just use one strand on each side and just going across. And then to advance so you could advance to the next one in the bottom but just go into the same one at the top and that will allow you to advance on the bottom without having to circle around the top at the same time so that it, it allows you to be able to bunch your stitches pretty seamlessly. So I'm gonna go into the next one and then I'm gonna go into the next one at the bottom but then the same one I was just in. And you'll get the hang of that. So then you can see that you're attaching things together and the goal is, is then to seal this up and then I'll see you back here in just a moment when we're ready to start stuffing. So I'm back. I've gone a little bit more than halfway. I still have a pocket here. So what I wanna do is I wanna generously stuff the soil and you want it so that it's enough so that when it sits in the, the, um, in the pot that it's got enough flexibility to it so it can take the shape but it's not um, too crazy and not stuffed enough so that it will fall over. So keep stuff in that till you think that's enough and then continue to sew it shut and then meet back here in just a moment. So I'm now just coming to the very end and I've got everything sewn in and if you drag the yarn through back and forth three times it completely gets stuck in the project. That's how you just do your whip stitching. So I got one, two and one more. Third time is a charm and so now you have the base soil done. So if your aloe vera is not sticking up the way you want it to what you can just do is that you can just uh, insert some floral wire or some kind of uh, craft wire down through the middle and then you can go right through into this uh, stuffing area. So now what you can just do is grab your pot and you can just place this inside just like so and then just position this all together. So this here would that be my aloe vera pot just like you see. So if this is overstuffed like you see there all you can just do for that if you have that much of a problem um, with it just a stick in your crochet hook in between and just kind of pull weed some stuffing out of there. You want to be careful you don't want to pull too much because it's harder to put it back in than it is to pull it out and just kind of realign it just kind of give it a good squish around and making sure that it's all looking pretty decent as you're working on that. So this is how you do your aloe vera and I hope that you enjoy and until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. We'll see you again real soon. Bye. -bye.